But until then, let's take a look at the history of one of Australia's great sports institutions, the MCG. And claim this land for the Port Phillip Association. This will be the place for a village. Over a century and a half on, the man who established Melbourne might have some difficulty recognising his village. It's grown just a little bit. Since 1835, Melbourne has grown into Australia's second largest city, with a population of over three million people. For its inhabitants, one of the city's most enduring and favourite landmarks is the Melbourne Cricket Ground. The paddock, like the village, that grew. On an area of land known as the Richmond Paddock, the Melbourne Cricket Club erected its first members pavilion in 1854. This was accompanied by marquees erected for such special occasions as inter-colonial cricket matches, like the one depicted here in the earliest known sketch of the Melbourne Cricket Ground. In 1860, the impressive grandstand with its reversible seating was erected, and in 1877, the Richmond Paddock was ready to stage the first ever test cricket match between Australia and England. Two years later, towers complete with carbon arc lamps were hoisted above the ground for a floodlit football match. The innovation was greeted enthusiastically by Melbournians of the day. Quite a contrast with the erection of the six modern daylight towers in the mid 80s. Right, right, so much for your According to the Melbourne Cricket Club's historian, Rex Harcourt, during the so-called conservative Victorian era, Melbourne and the MCC were anything but unprogressive. In 1879 was the first ever team game under lights at this ground anywhere in the world. It amazes world sports historians that it should have happened in 1879. And of course, in, 18, uh, in the late 1860s, the reversible stand was built uh, where the northern stand is today and that stand could be reversed facing inwards in uh, summer to see cricket and facing outwards in winter to see uh, football. And I believe that's technology that's totally lost to us now. Uh, it's a mystery how they actually did the reversing. We're still trying to find out that answer and it, it is. Teams of horses were used but how exactly they were done with a, uh, a solid brick base and brick pillars we don't know but portions, modules must have been swivelled round by horses teams of carpenters came in and so forth. The Melbourne Cricket Club, its committees and its ground have been the catalysts for so much that has made Australia such a great sporting nation. Athletics, or as it was known then, pedestrianism, was introduced to the colony at the MCG. The first cycle race in Australia, which eventually became the Austral Wheel Race and its associated attractions, was at the cricket ground. Baseball was first played there, as was lawn tennis. And of course, the rules of the first codified game of football in the world, the game we celebrate today, Australian football, were drawn up by members of the Melbourne Cricket Club. But cricket was what the MCG was built for. And this is how the ground looked from where the southern stand or outer is now during the Bodyline series of 1933 and jam packed with a then world record crowd. The grandstand that replaced the revolutionary reversible stand, which was burnt down in 1884, was itself replaced in 1956 by the three-tiered Northern or Olympic stand. As the name suggests, it was built for the 1956 Melbourne Olympic Games, and it was from there the exploits of the likes of Vladimir Kutz and Betty Cuthbert were seen, and from a bird's eye view. During the 56 Olympics, baseball was a demonstration sport and much to the chagrin of our American friends, the MCG still holds the world record crowd of over 90,000 for a baseball match. While the largest ever crowd at the G was for a Billy Graham crusade when over 130,000 packed the stands and spilled onto the grass. The last stand to be demolished was the Gray Smith in the mid 60s. Its replacement, the Western Stand, was named after one of Victoria's cricket legends, Bill Ponsford. The modern diamond vision screen replaced the large manual scoreboard in the early 80s. One of Melbourne's favourite pieces of architecture now reposes at Marnica Oval in Canberra. The current members pavilion, the third at the MCG, was built in 1927 and looks like being one of the few structures at the ground that won't be altered to any major degree 
as it's now classified by the National Trust. Right from the days of the Richmond Paddock, the history of the MCG has been one of constant evolution. Even the familiar green wooden seats that have given hundreds of thousands of us splinters over the years are being replaced. Soon everyone will have their own individual plastic bucket seat and, believe it or not, even here in the Barracas Holy of Holies, Bay 13. Here we are on the hallowed turf itself and not far from the spot where Bluey Adams ran on from the reserve bench, ran into Des Healy and KO'd both of them. Over in the Carlton Ford pocket in the 1979 grand final, Wayne Harms went for his famous dive, knocked the ball back into play and won the medal that had been struck in honour of his uncle, the great Norm Smith. And in the 1964 grand final, over on the Collingwood Ford line, Ray Gabalek went for his famous run and goal. Now, if he had run the entire length of the ground, as some Collingwood fans would have you believe, he would have gone 161 metres. And from boundary line to boundary line, on the wings at the MCG, the ground is 140 metres wide. It's not the biggest football ground in the world, but it's certainly the biggest ground in the world on which test cricket is played. For hundreds of thousands of Victorians and the many interstate and overseas visitors who make the MCG a must on their Melbourne holidays, the cricket ground holds many fond memories and a special place in their hearts. Recent moves to shift the VFL Grand Final from the MCG to VFL Park Waverley met with almost universal opposition. But as the MCG celebrates on its biggest day of the year, one question does remain. When the AFL Grand Final between the Brisbane Bears and the Los Angeles Angels is staged in the year 2003, will it still be played at the MCG?